Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm interested in the history of science, engineering, invention, and medicine. I like to bring remarkable characters back from obscurity. Today, Francis Bailey, English polymath. Francis Bailey was a scientist, traveller, big shot in the city of London, detective, historian, and saviour of the Imperial Yard. If you have ever seen a total eclipse of the sun, then you might have heard of Bailey's beads, named for him after he wrote about them in 1836. The effect of the last and first rays of sunlight grazing the mountains of the moon. Among many other achievements, he was a founder of the Royal Astronomical Society in 1820. He just squeaks in at the edge of a well-known Victorian image but he is in good company with people like chemist John Dalton and James Watt, the inventor of the steam engine. They are all imagined together here in the library at the Royal Institution in London. But we can take a closer look. He came from a small market town called Thatcham, west of London. His father was a banker. He left school at 14 and began an apprenticeship in trade. He met the preacher and chemist, Joseph Priestley, who discovered oxygen. Bailey took a gap year, as you might say, in 1796-7, making his way down the Ohio and Mississippi rivers before there were roads, looking for business opportunities in trade. When the side of his boat was stoved in by an ice floe, he passed some difficult weeks living off the forest while the river was icebound. Eventually, he wrote, We were awakened out of our sleep with a noise like thunder, and jumping out of our beds, we found the river was rising and the ice breaking up. All attempts would be feeble to describe the horrid, crashing, and tremendous destruction which this event occasioned on the river. He went on to become a founder of the Royal Geographical Society in 1830. Influenced by Joseph Priestley, Bailey was strongly opposed to slavery. American trade didn't work out for him, but Bailey entered the London Stock Exchange established in 1801. He became a shareholder in it and a member of the governing committee. He wrote a book, Doctrine of Interest and Annuities, analytically investigated and explained in 1808, which became the rule book standardising financial calculations all over the city. Fake news is not new. In 1814, a soldier arrived at an inn at the port of Dover, claiming that Napoleon, Britain's enemy, was dead. The financial markets rose until the story turned out to be false. It was reported that in the detection and exposure of this fraud, Mr. Bailey had a considerable share and was appointed by the committee of the Stock Exchange to get up the evidence against the perpetrators, a task which he has said to have performed in so masterly a manner that no more complete and conclusive chain of evidence was ever produced in a court. By coincidence, a neighbour of Francis Bailey inherited a trove of the Astronomer Royal John Flamsteed's letters. He was a contemporary of Isaac Newton. Bailey went through them in 1835 and made himself quite unpopular by exposing the dark and cantankerous side of this national hero. It appears that Newton, not satisfied or pleased with the answers that he received from Flamsteed, forgot himself and the duty he was then performing under the Queen's warrant, ran himself into a great heat and very indecent passion, and used him so he was never used before, called him a puppy and many other hard names, but puppy was the most innocent of them. In retirement, Bailey found himself a new project to measure gravity, trying to improve upon the delicate experiment that Henry Cavendish had performed 40 years previously 
measuring the attraction between two pairs of metal balls. With some money from the Royal Society, he set up the apparatus at home, where he lived with his sister. He put it in a spare room, set back from the vibrations of the street. He insulated it and shielded it from draughts and from the sun's rays. Starting in 1838, about a thousand readings were taken over 18 months before he decided to improve the apparatus and start all over again. 2,153 new recordings with balls of different weights and sizes and metals and different wires took him a further 18 months. During this period, he was knocked down by a horse in Covent Garden and said, it nearly deprived me of existence and seven weeks elapsed before I could again venture to resume the observations. The seat of Parliament, London's Palace of Westminster, burnt down in 1834, taking with it the primary British standards of weight and length established by law in 1760. Fortunately, just before the fire, Bailey had a fine copy of the yard made for the Astronomical Society, involving repeated comparisons and measurements for accuracy. Bailey's metal was the name given to the material used to make a new primary yard. It was a copper, tin and zinc alloy, which is stiff and expands little in the normal range of room temperature. Bailey died in 1844, but thanks to him, the Standard Yard was recreated by Act of Parliament in 1855. Secondary standards of length can be seen in Trafalgar Square today still. Francis Bailey was buried at Thatcham, where he grew up. I'm really pleased to say that a school there is named after him. I very much hope you've enjoyed watching.